West Coast most dangerous fault lines overdue to rupture the next 30 years. The rich crest earthquakes have caused the San Andreas to creep. This is what the USGS is warning us of. We know that the 7.1 July 5th ridge crest earthquake that happened on the east part of the garlic fault, which is horizontal to the to San Andreas, has been having a tremendous amount of earthquake activity. Some estimate that is over 30,000 since July 5th. We, I'll give you a link to the volcano USGS Gav Caso Volcanic Field, which is the area of the Ridgecrest earthquake. That is where you can see the activity. The biggest one that we had today was, from what I see here, 2.8 magnitude in Trona and 2.3 around China Lake. And they're, in, they're um, still going on. They're continuing. Now, there are those who say that they are decreasing. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. All, the, all that we know is that it is in a volcanic field. And the current alerts given by USGS say that these quakes are being monitored. And the situation for any sign of volcanic activity will be provided in updates as warranted. So it's not just any fault, it's a volcanic field with a magma chamber underneath. It has one of the biggest geothermal plants in the country. It supplies 270,000 families with electricity and it is moving. This earthquake of July 4th and 5th, the 6.4 on July 4th, the 7.1 on July 5th, have also caused the San Andreas to move and creep. There are those who say that it did not affect San Andreas whatsoever. One of the recent articles that we had, the uh, updates from USGS, says yes, it did cause the San Andreas to move because of the activity here. But I would like you to listen to the reason why Dr. Lucy Jones, the uh, famous geologist who keeps on updating us concerning what's going on there, did warn us that the San Andreas big one that's being awaited for is has not been mitigated, has not been lessened by the Ridgecrest earthquakes. And this is the reason why. There's not just the San Andreas, there are also other fault areas, fault lines, which are very dangerous in that system. And we do see a few quakes on the San Andreas regularly, and there is the potential for a uh, mega quake there, not just Southern California and the southern portion of the San Andreas, but also in the north and also in the middle. And uh, in the north, especially when we had the last mega quake of nine magnitude in the year 1700, we're overdue for another big one there as well, magnitude eight or nine. Unfortunately, most buildings cannot withstand more than a magnitude 7 earthquake. So the high rise and the skyscrapers are going to have problems, very major problems. A lot of these high rise buildings are made to have their windows, windows pop out, which means that the streets below will be uh, full of cracked glass, three feet high. Uh, in, in this type of an event, that's the minimum that would happen. So I'll let you listen to the reason why the West Coast is uh, overdue for a major earthquake having to do with San Andreas and the nearby faults. Also, we should keep in mind that the Ridgecrest earthquake took place, as we see here, those little dots, on the Walker Lane fault system. And the geologists have not at all mentioned this at all the Walker Lane fault system. As we can see here, it's locked into the garlic fault, which is locked into the west horizontally as it goes perpendicular to the San Andreas, as we see here. That is locked like a zipper with the San Andreas. The Walker Lane to the east is uh, of the garlic is again locked in like a zipper. And the whole thing makes 
uh, locked oval shape going all the way up to the Cascadia Arc and the Juan de Fuca Plate towards uh, Oregon and up to Washington and this whole system nudges up northwards towards Vancouver Island, let's put it that way. That's why when the July 2nd, I guess July 2nd we had the total eclipse of the sun, July 3rd we have the 6.2 magnitude north of Vancouver Island in Canada, 13 hours later we had the July 4th 6.4 magnitude in Ridgecrest, and July 5th the 7.1 in Ridgecrest, huge earthquakes, major earthquakes, Thank goodness there was no loss of life. That was a miracle. And proof that uh, God is protecting California. And the thing is that uh, because of the 6.4 that took place July 4th, people were ready and alert for the big one of 7.1 on July 5th, which took place in the evening. And uh, there was no loss of life, thank goodness. It was in an area that was very sparsely populated. If that had happened in Los Angeles, um, things would have been totally different. So let's look at the warning and why Dr. Lucy Jones says it has not been mitigated at San Andreas. America's most dangerous fault is likely to rupture in the next 30 years. This is by Joanne Kennel on the Science Explorer. Well, even Canada is warning her people that the West Coast could have a catastrophic earthquake, a huge major earthquake from the Cascadia subduction zone. But this has to do with, of course, the San Andreas fault line here. No, it's not the San Andreas fault. But it has to do with the area, which is riddled with fault lines people don't even know about. When people think of dangerous faults in the United States, the San Andreas Fault likely comes to mind. But despite its notoriety, there's nothing potentially, there's something potentially greater, another potentially greater threat located in the East Bay region of Northern California, and it's known as the Hayward Fault. The Hayward Fault is what could produce the greatest natural disaster ever to hit the United States. This is what geologists are warning about. Although the Hayward Fault is shorter than the San Andreas Fault, what it lacks in potential magnitude, it makes up for with proximity to major cities lying directly under structures where many people live and work. The San Andreas cuts predominantly through remote areas, whereas the entire length of the Hayward Fault runs through densely populated cities such as Oakland, which has a population of 406,000, Fremont population of 224,000, and Berkeley population of 116,000. And it's not far from the San Andreas Fault, which has a population of 805,000. And San Jose population bigger, 945,000. So you see here, you have a population of over two and a half, close to three million people. Given the Hayward's proximity to large populations, its rupture presents a huge risk. In fact, the U.S. Geological Survey described the Hayward Fault as, quote, the single most urbanized earthquake fault in the United States, end quote. Signs of the fault are found across the state. Offset sidewalk curbs, cracked roads, and homes, and even cracks in the University of California, Berkeley's football stadium. And what's more, in 2015, the Working Group on California Earthquake Probabilities determined that there was a 72% chance of an earthquake occurring at the fault in the next 30 years, one that could measure a magnitude greater than 6.7. So they're giving it a 72% chance. And let's always remember, they're always conservative in their ratings. The last significant quake on the Hayward Fault was in October 1868. It was estimated at a magnitude 6.8. And according to a 2012 paper published in the Bulletin of the Seismological Society of America, James Lynn Kampfer of USGS and colleagues determined 
that the false recurrence interval over the last two millennia is about 161 years, plus or minus 65 years. Since the last quake was 148 years ago, the state is currently sitting within the range. So, in other words, it's a ticking time bomb and it's ready to blow. It's overdue, they're saying. USGS led a, state, a study back in 2008 along with URS Corporation, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, Stanford University, and the University of California at Berkeley to create computer simulations of large earthquakes on the Hayward Fault. The computer simulations included a total of seven earthquake scenarios, three with magnitude 6.8 scenarios, with different starting locations, epicenters that is, three with magnitude 7.0 scenarios with different epicenters, and one magnitude 7.2 scenario. One of the 7.0 magnitude scenarios using Oakland as a starting point can be seen. The Hayward Fault has a potential for immense devastation, but according to Steve Newton, geology professor at College of Marine in Kentfield, California, many people are not really aware of the danger it possesses, and some do not even know where the fault is. Although it's only a matter of time before a large earthquake on the Hayward Fault happens, how governments prepare for it is crucial and will make a big difference in the aftermath of this inevitable natural disaster. But the science is clear. The Hayward Fault is going to rupture in the future, and when it will happen, it was, uh, it's unknown when, but it's uh, predicted to be quite soon. Unfortunately, the effects will be major shaking of infrastructure, loss of life and injuries, and economic damage. And the article appears in the June issue of Earth magazine. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.